Hey, what's up? Uh, I'm Who Shot Scott, and I have. Who do I have next to me? Uncle Hyun. And. See a drummer. And yeah, we are a band that likes to play music. <laughs> Am I supposed to be looking at the camera or looking at you? Because. Couch. What was yours? Tasty. Couch. I said mouse. Tasty couch mouse. All right, hold on. <laughs> House. What'd you say? Lunch. House. Paris. <laughs> so this band is over now. <laughs> <laughs> I need to find new band. Hey, Noima, what are you doing next week, bro? <laughs> Lunch House Paris. Okay. Holiday. Restaurant. Holiday. Couch. Did you do couch again? <laughs> no, he did couch. Coffee. Yeah. What'd you say? Brunch. Coffee. Hotel. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's right. You can get brunch and coffee at a hotel. Sometimes so we're still a band. No. <laughs> we're going to stay together. We're going to stick this one out. But you guys, though, you guys should start up your own thing because you guys had cafe for a sec there. Maybe I'm the the one that's messing this whole thing up. Indulgent to my own palate and taste. Very, like, fearlessly indulgent to the point where it's like, I don't care if anyone likes it, if I like it. Um, yeah, I think I realized... And because I used, to, I've been making music for a little, little while now, and like I think I realized at some point, because <clears throat> I used to make music with the intention of like potentially, you know, oh, is this gonna be successful or would anyone really like this? Um, but then I just switched at some point, and I'm like, I love music so much, and I respect so many artists, and I, I feel like I have a. Yeah, I, I have almost like this stubbornness with my creative expression, which is like, I, I, I feel like the more selfish I am to my inner core and my inner taste and my like core programming, um, the more selfless that is of an act to the art because it, it I feel like when I love, the artists that I love are full, true expressions of themselves. They don't hold back. They don't try to water down the vision. You know what I mean? I love full expression. In lockdown, I was... That's sort of like when Who Shot Scott was birthed. Um, and I think that I was making a lot of stuff at that time. I actually challenged myself to write like for two weeks just to write a song every day. And then I sent it back to, back and forth to my manager. And like 12 of the songs were like really corny, like like conventional hip hop or like R&B sort of vibes. But then two of them were ones where I just sort of like let loose. And I sent them back and forth to my manager. I sent all four, 14 songs to my manager. And he was like, whoa, whoa, whoa but what are these two though? What are they? Like, he listened to all the other ones. He was like, what are these two? And I was like, oh, those are like the ones I just sort of made at the end of the day just for fun. That were like the most fun. And I realized I'm like, they were the most fun ones to make. They were the easiest ones to make. And that's when I realized like something that triggered at that point where I'm like, oh, the stuff that is really like, in, again, indulgent to my personal taste that is almost like kind of scary to share with anyone is the shit you know apparently i mean that uh, it was just it was just really validating to be like oh the stuff that comes easiest to me is the stuff that i should be releasing you know i'm definitely not gonna answer this question but you guys can if you want <laughs> yeah I, I feel like it's the the obvious answer but loners and like it's so fun to listen to such a good hook it's so fun to play it's like that, that kind of like the future nostalgic kind of drum feel and like the, the, the punky kind of aspects to it with the new age stuff. So yeah, definitely loners for sure. Sorry, I just want to say one thing. He is yeah, 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 guy. I am yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is. I don't have a favorite. <laughs> he hates all of the music. Um, I guess the way the song came about, was post lockdown a lot of the stuff has to do with lockdown i'm realizing <laughs> but um post lockdown an experience that i think a lot of people had was like being isolated for so long and then having to get out and reintegrate into society and socialize again um so for me my the, my story is that i went out to a gathering and it was the first time i think i had gone to something that big post lockdown and um it really like shook me just talking to people felt like just alien like it, i didn't know 
I think everyone was just sort of like disassociating from like reality or something like that. I was I was definitely disassociating, and I was like, man, I feel like everyone that's talking to me right now about just sort of general life things just feels so different. It's almost like they're talking another language, and it really revved up my anxiety, which I'm generally a pretty anxious person um but i think that just like was revved up by all of the circumstances of the time and so yeah i dipped from this thing like 30 minutes in and i was dry i got in my car and i was driving home and i was just thinking to myself like i was i had to calm myself down from this little mini panic attack i was having but as i was driving home i was like yeah it's gonna be a sick song one day <laughs> and so i just wrote it the next day i was just like yeah this is it this is like i just it wasn't overthought i was just like yeah i think it maybe split things Artists like me, I really thrived because I'm super introverted. So I was like able to just have space away from the industry and everything that was happening to just, because I, I feel that ge genuinely, I feel for the creative energy, space is amazing. Just being isolated and, and really slowing things down, pacing things and not like rushing. Like I love, you know, going to studios and working and the hustle of, of it all. But at the same time, when I'm writing for my stuff, I love just having just as much space as possible. But obviously, yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's like a double-edged sword, right? Like yeah. like a lot of people lost out on a lot of things and that was really hard for a lot of people, but authenticity kind of shone through for a lot of people as well, which is sick. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like on the event side, it obviously was a huge hit to everybody. Um, that, that was their bread and butter. I know a lot of friends who run gigs and festivals who were on the brink of like just closing everything down like oh yeah that's it i'm not i don't do this anymore so from an industry standpoint yeah of course that was just like really it was just yeah double-edged sword really sort of uh contrasting time yeah i'm not sure if i have the right answer for this anyway we, maybe we need 10 more years before we can really look back and be like oh whoa that's what happened <laughs> i don't know another artist could release my music just because the stories are so niche like to my life i guess an Arab kid who grew up in Auckland <laughs> who went through the exam a little Mikey maybe Mikey Two Eyes shout out Mikey Two Eyes um, just like an Arab guy maybe who went through the same life experiences as me went through some really bad uh, breakups in terms of like friends and relationships and was also somehow brave enough to like talk about them candidly in music so I don't know if there's another artist that already exists but I'm sure there's Again, I'm sure my experience isn't unique to me. I'm sure that a lot of people have been through similar stuff. I know a lot of people have been through similar stuff. So that's uh, my way of non answering that question. But yeah, sorry. Let's start with Tia on this one. <laughs> and now Max. <laughs> <laughs> How we set the tone? Uh, I don't know. I just grab a couple of drumsticks and um, bash the drums away. No. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, I think we all come together um, when we do when we got a show coming up, and um, <clears throat> it depends on heaps of different things. But um, my main thing would be just to give it 100 percent or 200 percent or whatever it is every time, and just to see what these guys are doing, vibing off them. Really, I don't know. That's how I set the tone. It's like, yeah, similar, like, remove the ego, just understand that this is not serving any one person. This is just, like, an experience we're all sharing together and just, like, yeah, as soon as you get out there as well, it's always fun as fuck. So that, that yeah, setting the tone comes beforehand and just, like, we're all on the same level, go out there and we smash it every time. It's, it's fun. Yeah. I guess this is now, like, I didn't know that the relation, the 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 question was in relation to live stuff, but I think it's a good place to take it. I mean, there's always different ways for every situation, but since you guys talked about live and, you know, I was talking to you before, you know, you were saying like, oh, how do you prep for like performing and stuff? For me, it's just like peace, just quiet, just real chill. That's how I like, I, I get myself in this sort of headspace that I need to, to get out there. I just, I'm very much, I need like everything to be still, you know, peaceful. So yeah, that's how I set the tone. Try to shut out the world. 